I'm Gary. This is Austin. And Gritty. This is Midwest Mike's coming back at you. Finally got a chance to get with these guys and uh, record another episode, man. Life's been super busy, I think, for all of us. Busy's good, though. Yeah. Uh, so staying busy is good. Keeps keeps it out of trouble. So busy's good, and uh, we've been bad, busy betting, too, which has been really, really fun. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's really good. But uh, this episode would be kind of fun. Because we're going to talk about, we'll obviously talk about like our each of the teams that we follow. So the Chiefs big time. And then we'll talk some Cowboys too. Uh, but also we'll talk about the stuff we were right about and the stuff we were 100% wrong about. And Russ, we trust, baby. Hey, I do want to throw Dang. it out there though. Like <laughs> sports betting being legal in Kansas has been good for my uh, bank account. I bet it has. Not for the I, people who live in Missouri, though, who got to drive over there. Yeah. We got to waste gas to go make money. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've already cashed out once. I f- uh, with like way more than I started. So you're you're so. like you're totally house money right I'm now. I'm totally house money. Oh yeah, I'm I'm 100 house money. I haven't cashed out, uh, but if I did, I I could be house money. But I've, I've left all my shit. Yeah. Jody Forsen, week one, free bets for FanDuel, cashed out two grand. I didn't sign up for FanDuel. I haven't done it yet. I need to do pro- like I need to do more promo hopping. There was one they ran uh, in Kansas last. I think it was BetMGM ran on, on last Saturday. It was five five dollars and any touched any touchdown at all in the Kansas TCU game would gave you the two hundred and free bets. I should have just jumped on that. See, I tried to sign up for them with one of their promos, email even email customer service because I never got my free bets. Really? Yeah. So I I'm know. done with BetMGM. Are you using draft? Are you on DraftKings? Really? FanDuel, BetMGM, Ban- FanDuel, and BetMGM. You have any problems with BetMGM? Nope. Okay, I've been no. only DraftKings, and then when I'm in Missouri, I still use Bovada if I have to. DraftKings mm-hmm. and I do Caesars Rewards. Oh yeah, that's smart. That's we're trying to get him a trip. Oh, I'm already platinum. We're already going. Yeah, I'm already, we're already platinum. I am. I'm <laughs> yeah. platinum now. You text us. You text us on Sunday night. Yeah, like all of a sudden I jumped on my account and it was like platinum. I was like, sweet, let's go. Let's get that diamond, Caesars. <laughs> They get that diamond. Keep, so the the points you're betting on on the Caesars is going like there's yeah. so many points that go towards that status. Yeah. Okay, I need to get on that too. Because once you okay, so this is like kind of a I mean still sports, but once you hit diamond with Caesars, you actually can do this thing. It's called like uh, I don't know exactly what the term is, but you take that diamond status and you can go to a different hotel chain. And say, hey, oh, status match. Yeah, status match. And so other some, casinos will match yeah. your status. All of a sudden, you'll be diamond club everywhere, and you're, you'll get be getting these free hotel rooms. There's going to be free stuff, nights so. in Vegas, baby. And then what you could do is you can keep going, and there's like rental car services that will tag onto that too. And you can get all kinds of crazy yeah. stuff. I saw a little post about it on TikTok. I should have saved it, but status match is a big deal. So, Gary, I'm, I'm going to piggyback on you, man. Get that diamond status. Yeah, hey, hey I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm a big-time gambler. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, all right, so. Hey, I won one bet, and I'm platinum status, baby. That's let's what, go. That's my, type, that's my type of betting right there, boy. Um, so, yeah, let's just jump in. We're five weeks into the NFL season. There is one undefeated team left, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, that will end Sunday night, but, you know. We'll see. In Rush We Trust. Yep, in Rush We Trust. Hey. Uh, but what, what are your guys' thoughts on the Eagles so far? Uh, I mean, obviously got to talk about them. They're the only 5-0 and team in the NFL. I mean, when you when, when you think about the, the whole thing, you know, are they contenders for the Super Bowl? Maybe. Maybe just because we there's still so many questions in the NFC. Mm-hmm. Like, does Aaron Rodgers actually figure it out? Does Tampa Bay figure it out? Is Dallas for real? Do the Rams figure it out? Does San Francisco figure it out with Jimmy G as their quarterback? Do they figure out how to score points? I mean, there's still so many question marks. Yeah, the, the NFC, NFC, I feel like it's wide open. Yeah, but so I think I, but I think the Eagles do have an easy track to maybe a divisional round game, maybe a possible one seed, just because, depending on what happens, obviously, Sunday. I think, yeah. it, has, I think it has a lot to go towards that direction. It's one of the best quarterback moves in the last – like three, it was like three years where Philly moves off of Wentz and moves on to Hurts. That's, I mean, that's really, really, really good timing. And, and, and like, you know, it took some guts to go ahead and pull that trigger and let Hurts, because I think when they brought him in, he finished out the year, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, he, he struggled a little bit. He played like 
five game, four games, something like that. Yeah, he's trying. They, they let him go through the growing pains, and and come. Like, and then was that with Doug? That was with Doug Peterson, though, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and then they moved off Doug Peterson, which was kind of shocking, in my opinion. But I mean, if you're going to clean house, might as well start all the way green, start but, all the way fresh. But yeah, I'm I'm not surprised about Philly. I had him picked to win the East. Yeah, we all picked them, um, and their their like their schedule is a little bit, and it's not a bad thing towards them, but they have like a nice schedule, pretty soft, yeah. some tough games, but they you know they 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 squeak one by against Arizona, and so it's I don't know Eagles are for real to me, but like you said, there's teams in the NFC where it's like, are they going to figure it out? And then there's other teams in the NFC where you go, are they real? Are the four and one Giants real? No, see. uh Here's kind of where, where I'm landing on Philly. Like, I mean, they've they've had a favorable schedule. I I figured they'd start hot. Um, <clears throat> I think it's going to be one of the deals where they kind of flame off at the end. I think I'm glad I'm glad that Cooper Rush is starting again for the Cowboys because I, I feel like it's a no win situation if you put Dak back in there this week against Philly. You know, um, coming off that injury, like. Obviously, he couldn't start the week fully healthy, so then he gets short week on practice. And I mean, if the offense struggles at all, right? Like, it's it's all on deck at yeah. this point. Um, if you throw him back in there now, I don't think there's a quarterback controversy in Dallas either. I think when Dak is healthy, Dak is your starter. I mean, there's things that you've seen in Dak that made him worth the money that he's been paid and is going to earn, but. I don't think there's any reason to rush him back with Cooper Rush going four and over this last stretch. Now, again, I think Philly's a really good team. This is hard. Like, I was trying to think today. Like the last time it was this early in the season, there was only one an undefeated team left. It's been I mean, a long can, time. Can you guys think of a, another example, like in recent memory, um, just where there was only one undefeated team? Because usually. I mean, after five weeks, yeah, you've got four or five teams that that have that are undefeated. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a it's a it's been a really good year as far as like yeah. parity goes because there's a lot of teams that are still in it. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, we're gonna talk later about some of our hits and misses. I mean, there's a couple teams where I go, well, I feel like I missed, but they're in second place. So did, did I miss on them really bad or or what? But Talk about um, the like I brought up the Giants yeah. earlier four and one. Uh, one thing that is nice to see is something that me and Gary were on probably three or four years ago. Whereas, dang, if Saquon stays healthy, yeah. this dude to me is maybe you know you could maybe not the best running back in the league, but I'd say it's easily you could say top three. He's the number one. He's the leading rusher I think right now. Right? Yeah. Stays healthy. And he got and he got banged up last week. Yeah, you know, so I mean, it's so like it's so hard to say this running back's better than this running back. This running back's better than that running back, because how often nowadays do we see running backs play a full 16, 17 games? Yeah, they right. miss two or three here, but then somebody else steps into the limelight. Like last year, JT played an entire year, and JT was absolutely amazing. You know, Nick Chubb the year before played and had an amazing year, played the whole season, and then last year it was Nick Chubb, Kareem. Well, Kareem missed some time, Chubb missed some time. You know, it's kind of hard just to get a gauge on those guys. And then Derrick Henry over the last two years has missed four games and three games. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of hard to get a gauge on him. But, yeah, I mean, when he's healthy, you know, CMC is one of those guys. Yep. When, he's healthy, when he's Big healthy, time. Saquon's one of those guys. The problem is now you're getting to the point of the season mm-hmm. where it's like, all right, you're starting to get those soft tissue injuries. McCaffrey showing up on injury reports early in yep. both of the – or. All three of the last three yeah, weeks. Yeah, not surprising. And now Saquon was banged up in that game last week where he had to play quarterback. It you goes, know. yeah, and it goes back to the deal where, I mean, you really have to, you got to have two guys, at least. I, yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this about the Giants. They, they've they had, they've been, I feel like, searching for the right coaching fit I was ever, touch ever that since too. Yeah. Uh, Tom Coughlin left. I feel like they found the right coach now. Hundred thousand percent. Brian Dable. My money says yes. Like I, <laughs> the I, money that I bet on the yeah. coach of the year says yes. Absolutely. Oh, you went right. Dable coach of the year. Oh, absolutely. Oh, one hundred percent. I put I put it on him and I put it on um, Campbell up there in 
Detroit. Yep. Okay. I think if he, I think if they win seven games, like what we were talking about with our opening divisional show, yeah. I think if they win eight games, nine games, I mean that's, I mean that's turning around a, a poverty franchise. Oh, that's yeah. lower than I'm, poverty. Yeah, I'm trying to think. But I got money on both anybody, of them. So. I'm trying to think. There's anybody else that like the Vikings? I think Dable's done. A, you know, he's done a good job too. And I, you know what? And, and it's gonna. The Vikings are good. When they're not on prime time, and that's it. It's cousins. <laughs> yeah, prime time for some reason. I think it's it, he struggles. The lights get bright. I think he's such a. Uh, I saw a, a routine guy, some, maybe such a regimented routine guy that when it's time to play at three thirty, actually he's okay too. It's seven o'clock, or go have to you, London, or you, go have to you been awake all day, and yeah, or go to London, and it's rough if he's playing that Sunday noon to noon to, or near three or three thirty games. He's actually pretty fuck pretty good. Yeah. yeah, like he's actually a pretty solid quarterback. He's my fantasy quarterback. So he puts he gets numbers for sure. Oh, yeah. the rest of my fantasy he's teams, I need time. to put up twenty two a week, and I'm, I mean, I'm like, and so I'm, I'm with you guys on Dable. I think Dable's done an awesome job. Yeah, and uh, I think, I think culture got, for sure. I think he's got that locker room. I mean, yes, we're all sports fans. We've all played sports. We all understand this. If you have a locker room, you have a chance to beat anybody you step on the field against. Absolutely, I think if everybody's pulling in the same direction. Yep, that's what you get. And sometimes, you know, you look around the league, for instance, the Raiders. All those guys in that locker room aren't pulling the same direction. Yeah, I agree. We saw that Monday night. Scissor route where they run into each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, they're not all pulling in the same direction. They don't put the same amount of focus into the game. You saw with Miami today. All of a sudden, the team captains voted to remove the ping pong tables out of there because we need to focus on how do we get better every day. Yeah. You know, you need to pull in the same direction if you have aspirations for Super Bowl, AFC, NFC Championship games, or possibly becoming the champs at the end of the year. On a point on Coach of the Year, what what's the lowest number of wins you think somebody can get to get that Coach of the Year? For the, for, Cause are you I, talking about like from poverty or something like that? No, no, like like say like you're like well, typically even, Coach of the Year goes to like somebody gets twelve, thirteen. Yeah, I get twelve or thirteen wins. So can Dable win it? Going because if he gets the Giants to nine or ten wins, nine wins, he goes eight. And nine, that's a really or nine and like, eight. People will recognize that like, that's a really, really good job. But will he win it? Because has anybody really won it? I mean, if nine he, games. If he wins, if he wins nine games, let's say he goes nine and eight, or let's say he might squeak out another one and go ten and seven. I mean, he did that with Daniel Jones. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I still, I still firmly believe Daniel can Jones you, is not the guy. Me, can you name me a wide, two, two wide receivers on that team? No. So he won ten games without a prime. A, a, is Shepard still there? Yes. Yeah, but he yeah. tore his ACL. Shepard, oh, that's right. Hey, uh, he tore his ACL jogging. Hey, God, did they cut? Did they cut uh, Galladay? Uh, Galladay yet? <laughs> that was a waste of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's a huge win for Dayball if he that, wins eight, nine, ten games. I mean, as we've been bouncing around, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot of NFC. You know, one, one more thing you kind of mentioned it. Jimmy G's back at the helm in San Francisco. You know, people were were talking about, and, and, you know, you mentioned the locker room thing. I don't think that there was any issue with Jimmy G, like, in the locker room or with his coaches. I think Jimmy G knew, like, hey, they're going to give this young guy the chance. But I'm going to have my – if he gets hurt, and which running quarterbacks do, especially early in their careers, seems like, because they take more hits, like, Jimmy G's like, I'll I'll be all right. Yeah. And I'll get my chance, right? So now, I mean, obviously San Francisco, L.A. looks to be reeling um, the Rams. Arizona, I've never been too high on because I I don't think Kyler is that guy. (laughs) The toddler. Um, Good fantasy quarterback. Yeah. And obviously, like. Those are are always down 25. Yeah. He gets me the garbage numbers every time. I think Seattle's obviously still the fourth place team in that division, but. Any anything else in that division or anything else in the NFC you guys want to hit on before we? Well, as far as San Francisco goes, I've, uh, I I think I think I had them picked to win the West. I don't I, I don't I remember. Think, I was pretty I'm high. Pretty sure, I, I think, think me I and you too. were on that same page I on think that, I did too, which, I, I, which like, I still think can happen because the Rams are. I don't know what's going on in LA, but uh, they do not look good. At all, so San Fran, San Fran getting it wouldn't be a shocker, uh, no matter which quarterbacks in. That was one reason why I liked picking them because I'm like, even if I feel like Trey Lance or Jimmy G, I'm like interchangeable, sort of. I mean, yeah. it'd be a little bit different styles, which we don't know because they're but their running game, apart. their running game is nasty. Shanahan's a really, really good play designer, play caller, um, 
and you know they got the weapons, they got Debo and stuff like that. So, um, the one last thing I guess before we get out of the NFC, something that I think Gary, one of y'all brought up, was out of all those teams that we talk about, hey, they're going to figure it out. Which one do you think has the best chance of figuring it out? Like um, a, te- from a team the, from, the, a from team, the teams who we and think- not necessarily a losing record team, but a team that's maybe around the five hundred mark. I mean. The team that I think is going to figure it out is obviously the team with the most weapons to their disposal. So I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm taking with, Tampa Bay. I'm with you on that. Because you got Tom Brady, who's obviously going through absolute hell right now. And O-line is banged the up. The O-line's bad. terrible. Receivers are banged Receivers up. Receivers are banged up. I mean, once that team finds its mesh with the offensive line, they'll be okay. Tom can figure it out. When they get healthy on the receivers with the weapons, they'll figure it out. The team that I think can be interchangeable in that aspect is the 49ers, in my opinion. Because, I mean, they just, I mean, you walk into a stadium, you're like, okay, I just got to put up 20 with that defense. So right, how do yeah. we put up 20? If we can put up 20 and we're only giving up 12 and a half, I mean, you're talking about a touchdown plus, yeah. a two point conversion plus on top of that from winning. Games, I mean, winning a lot of games. So, I mean, I think I, I still see them winning 12 games, 11 games. You, you two did both pick San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I just looked it I up. thought so. I was uh, thinking maybe there was a shot I chose LA. And that was, and, and that was based off of Trey Lance. Yeah. But looking at how the defense is playing, because I feel like with Trey, they could score 24, 26 points a game, which would be really good. But now you see that defense, that might be an all-time defense in San Francisco. It's really see, good. when they're healthy, it's really, really good. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm really loving the Cowboys defense, obviously, right now. I mean, they haven't given up. They gave up 19 week one to Tampa, and it's been lower than that the, the last two weeks. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if that defense is giving up less than 20 points in the NFL, I mean, that, that's pretty good, um, yeah. in, in my opinion. Uh, and I guess, I mean, I'm just not looking at Dallas as figuring it out because... I think they're doing well. They're, I think they're, they're doing well the right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, so. I, think Mike, I think Micah Parsons is... Uh, I think he's going to win defensive player of the he's year. He's a generational dude, right? Like, I love I love when you see guys and you can just be like, yep. That's that's, that's, that's the guy right there. So it's going to be, I mean... I mean, that's... He, he, I don't want to say mean, it early, but that's Lawrence Taylor S. That's Derek Thomas S. Yes. yes. I mean, we're talking about Justin Houston in his prime coming off the edge. I mean, we're talking about an explosive dude that doesn't only beat you with power, but let you be late on a snap count. Yeah. He's going to beat the tackle to the edge every time, and he's going to kill a quarterback. Yeah. And I then, mean, it's, uh, it's so impressive. And then I think uh, Lawrence has been healthy. Yep, Lawrence and that's has been all, that's helped out quite a bit. He stepped up. He's a little bit older dude. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's played really well, too. Uh, and then you have um, you got what's his name yeah, Trayvon Diggs. Diggs, I don't think he's getting the picks. Is he doesn't he? have as many turnovers. But he's not give, He's That's not because he's learning how to actually cover guys getting, instead of gambling. He's not being super <laughs> reckless, which is actually helping in the long run. Because I believe last year he a high number of interceptions, but also uh, PFF came out and it was like super high number of like he got. He'd get burned because he would he bite on a, stuff. He gave up 1,186 yards last year. He would bite on a lot of stuff. <laughs> so he corrects that kind of mental where he's like, man, I just need to break stuff up instead of always going for that interception. Because mm-hmm. Jalen Ramsey was like that early in his career. You no, know, he just he's just imagining he's he's prime time, which uh, not everybody's prime. No, nobody else. Is nobody's prime. prime. And we could bring you know I've been following him, and I don't know why I don't bet on Jackson State every week. I don't know why I don't. Because they just win. But anyways, we can talk about Prime later. Yeah. And his little <laughs> scuffle with the Alabama State head coach. Oh, man. But, but we can move to the AFC. Yeah. And uh, we can talk about the home team first. Kansas City, the 4-1. Uh, as we uh, are recording right now, they got Buffalo Sunday. It's an afternoon game. And they're two-and-a-half-point dogs at home. Uh, what are your thoughts so far on this season uh, so far? You know, I mean, the Chiefs, in my opinion, are who I thought they were. Uh, the offense has not missed a beat, L- losing Tyree. Different, but hasn't yeah, missed Yeah, different, beat. but still scoring plenty of points. I mean, even in the loss, uh, you know, I felt like the offense played pretty well. Um, late. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they started figuring out some things late. You know, I, I feel like eventually – like, they've got to figure out how to start fast, though, because, like, obviously they spotted 17 to the Raiders, <laughs> kind of squeaked it out. But, I mean, a, a good NFL team, like, if you spot Buffalo 17, like, you're, you're, I don't care if we got 15 on our side, it's going to 
it's going to come back to bite you. Well, they got a couple different games, or, or sorry, they have a couple different games where they did start quick, and it ended up being just kind of coasting, right? Arizona mm-hmm. and then Tampa, they started out yeah. hot. And then the other three games, they all started off pretty cold, trying to get different stuff going. So I think it's an offense that just, I mean, obviously they're, they're just, they're just, I don't want to say figuring it out, but kind of figuring out exactly what works in the first quarter of the games. Because you can see, uh, and you saw it sp- uh, especially in the Raiders game, once you hit that halftime and you come out, slight adjustments on both sides of the ball were huge for that game. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the I mean the crowd was already crazy, and then it got crazier after the probably the worst call I've ever seen uh, yeah. on the rough and the passer. I hate saying that because I'm like, dang, am I am I being a homer? No, but I've watched it again. I'm like, I think that is the worst the worst call I've ever seen. Worse than the tuck rule, like worse than all that stuff. Like like pretty well, bad. Because here's the deal with the like you worse than tuck rule absolutely because the tuck rule was like. Kind of a, a judgment call, but to the letter of the rule, the right thing happened, right? To the letter of the rule. Right. But, like, Chris Jones had the ball out. Had the ball still, they were both still standing up. They were still yeah. both upright. Chris and Jones they, had the ball. And they, like, and, and I don't, I'm not one of these guys because I don't want reviews to, like, in the NFL games, like college targeting. Slows the game down so much. I agree. I don't want that. But they have to look at this rule because the one against Tom Brady oh. that, I mean, could have cost Atlanta the game. I mean, I still think Tampa wins. I get yeah. it, too. Because Atlanta, Atlanta scored on three straight drives. Atlanta scored on three straight drives. They're trying to get a stop, get one more shot, hey, right? And they got the stop. On a side note, Atlanta 5-0 and gets the spread. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I um, have Falcons. But, uh, you know, same. I mean, obviously in the Chiefs game, it didn't end up coming back to bite the Chiefs in the ass and, and cost them a game. But, like, a call like that could. Like, in the playoffs, in a one-possession game, mm. like, if that goes the wrong way in a crucial moment. And I I feel the pain in your voice because you know, you, you know about experiencing yes. a bad call. I mean, the Dez caught it. You know, it was a catch. It, and it that's was, even a more crucial spot. So That's a playoff game. So, yeah, yeah. I remember watching that live, and I, I really I could not believe it. And I'm like, what's going on? Because this guy's not a passer anymore as soon as that ball goes out. He's not, he's not, the, he's not a passer anymore. And, and even if he is, like say he still has the ball, what was Chris supposed to do? You can't stop gravity, man. And, yeah. he, did, and he did put his left hand down. It's not like he was like putting his yeah, hands up, just, I'm right. diving on your ass. Like, no, he – well. One hand couldn't go to the ground. What is he supposed to do? Just drop the football? Yeah. So he had the football. No, my job is to get the football. My job is to stop you, pr- produce turnovers. I have the ball now. I'm holding on to the ball. I put my left hand down. That's as best you're going to get. And, aren't and I'm all 320 pounds, man. Aren't all turnovers supposed to be reviewed? Yep. Yeah. But, so, they, called, but they called the roughing the passer. So that from trumps the it. Busy. Yep, so that trumps the review because there's not a turnover at that point. Okay. So uh, I got another thought on the Chiefs season. Uh, if uh, I think the game Monday is actually not as close if uh, Bucker's healthy, and I think he makes, I think he makes. He's he that dude is pretty accurate, right? I mean, you guys, you guys, we're we're friends on Facebook, Twitter, everything like that. You saw what I put out today. The yeah. Chiefs are a terrible field condition in Arizona, away from being five and zero. But was the field bad, or did he just step wrong? Why did why did why did four people end up with injuries in that game? Two from Arizona, two from us. Yeah, it's kind of similar injuries too. It's I like, mean, I mean, and you put your cleat on the ground. I feel it was pretty and bad. And it just gives out. I mean, it okay. was horrible. So, and then I also think that I actually think the because Butker's, the Colts I mean, game Butker's good for what seven points. Isn't, isn't that a natural surface because they can move it in and out of yes. that building? Yep. Yeah, but they had, so, for some reason they had just reseeded like that week. I don't know. Or I, I, remember, well, I, remember, I remember looking at it going, man, that, that field don't look great. I mean, I mean, he took up a piece of carpet. He took up a beaver tail like you golf. <laughs> so uh, th- that that also feels like a homer thing for me to say. Like, Bucker's healthy 5-0. But I'm like, dang it, I, I, I kind of feel that way. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, really I mean, I mean, it is. The, Matt Amendola was terrible. So and that, and that also shows how skilled that position is really. Because yeah. you can't just grab some, like. How many wins has Baltimore some- gotten because of Justin Tucker? Oh, so, got one the other night. Hey, did you see the pose and the pose after he did the kick? All right, Justin Tucker's a stud. He's stud. And, and so, there's like, only two kickers in the league with that type of that level of swag. Yeah. So, one of them is in Kansas City because when Butker made that 54-yard field goal on the bad ankle, 
I mean, you didn't even know he was hurt. He's a bad boy. Because he's hey. jumping around, hooping and hollering, head shaking. He's good. And then, uh, you know, another thing, too, if you want to talk about, you know, I, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with the defense. I actually think it would look even better with uh, McDuffie and with uh, Willie Gay. And with Gay, when is Gay back? Next week. So not Buffalo. No. I, I keep watching that. The NFL. And, Duffy, and Duff, Duffy's got like two more weeks, right? No. They said he might play Sunday. Let's go. He is, I mean, I don't from know everybody, From everybody I talked to that was at the media availability today for practice. Mm-hmm. He was moving around fine. In I, his and I think the defense have done, has done a pretty nice job. Nick Bolton's a big stud. Fitton needs to bounce. You know what I mean? That is, I mean, this is, this is how I know that Fitton is probably on his last leg here in Kansas City. Joshua Williams took three snaps Monday night. All three snaps he covered Devontae Adams. All three snaps were him covering him late in the fourth quarter. So they switched that uh, that matchup. Joshua Williams, long, big, physical, fast. And that's who was on him on the last play, too. And Joshua Williams didn't give him any space to bail away from Hunter Renfro. He was running right on his hip and said, nope, y'all just going to have to run into each other. Yeah. uh... You need the big physical guys when you're playing big physical dudes because... Yeah, I mean Devontae Adams was eating Rashad and, Fenton's lunch, and I won't I won't get on Fenton too hard on the on the fourth and one because I think uh, the play call for us was yeah. a was like a probably a zero. Mm-hmm. It was a cover zero. We thought I mean I thought Oakland was running. I thought Jay, I was like this is Jacobs. Yeah, nope. And I hey that takes guts. It was good play call. Great play call by McD- uh, uh, Josh. Was that the second touchdown? That's first touchdown. That was yeah. the first touchdown. Yeah, and it's a really nice play. That's a nice play call on the Raiders. You just caught the Chiefs with their pants down, and also knowing his bags is heavy. He likes to bring the bring the bring that blitz. And the thing is, like with Fenton, Fenton wants to get up in your face. He wants to press you. The problem is, if he misses, he doesn't have the recovery speed on the back end to make up for, like you said, a zero blitz here. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have that ability if he swings and misses. Devontae's good at making you swing and miss off the line. Oh, he's the best receiver in the league. Today. I mean, when you swing and miss off a dude like that who's big, long, and can run, I mean, you're going to get beat. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, Chiefs, I mean, I, I think they're about where I expected they would be at this point in the season. Uh, one of my misses, we talked about it before the show, obviously I missed on Denver and Russell Wilson. Let's ride. I mean, they are garbage. <laughs> Let's ride. Garbage. <laughs> uh, I, I, try, I try not to buy into that thing where people are, like, calling him. Because I, I think he is a good dude, like, family man, all that stuff. And people are, like, dog him because he's really corny. And then I see him do stuff where, like, where he, he loses the – like, he loses that game and he's in that press conference. And so – he's so shook. And he does the – let's ride. Like, he's, like, Broncos, Broncos country – Let's ride. And he's like walking away. Yeah. Let's ride. And I was like, that is so bizarre that he did that. Like, why? What's he doing? Like, it's so weird. Where they're they speaking would say, of shook. We didn't touch on this, but Carl Sheffers from the other night was absolutely one hundred percent shook yeah. after that pass. After that rough of the passer call, I've never seen an official literally having his voice tremble because eighty thousand people are just absolutely pissed. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, go back to the Raiders game. Devontae Adams shoving down the uh, cameraman. Mm-hmm. I saw he's got to be in court in Kansas City November 10th. That'll get that'll get continued or I think so. I think so. And I, I, think, I personally... I Devontae think just write me a check for 150 grand. We cool. <laughs> I, I think, I think <laughs> he, he... I'll drop charges right now. I honestly don't think he saw the guy until it was too late. But the problem I have is, like, if, if that's the case, if you truly didn't see him coming. Why'd you extend? Like, why didn't you stop at least and go, hey, man, I'm sorry, let me help you up. He kept going. He got, well, my thing is he extended and then stood there and looked at him like, yeah. and just kept on walking. And then I'm like, dang it. Dude. So I, I just don't see how you can defend him on that one. So I was pretty, I remember seeing that, I was like, oh, man, that's pretty bad. I mean, it, it, he of the moment and all that stuff. So I think, and I think, you know, he'll. He'll do what he has to do. It'll be some fine or something. Which that cameraman should not have been running across there. No, right somebody there. I forgot who it was. Oh, I agree was with that too. He yeah, he needs on, to know. 
He was talking on like Good Morning America or something like that. The cameraman was no, just a reporter. And he was like, "Why did? Why is he allowed to run across the tunnel? Where's the NFL security? Yeah, like when players are coming on and off the field, they should be the most secure. Yeah, they should be more secure than they are on the field. And if I was, if I was, <laughs> because it's Devante, the closest, the Devante still has his helmet yeah, on, don't and he? that's the closest that you'll be to the fans at yeah. any point in time. If, if Arrowhead fans sit on top of you, they need to be protected going in and out." Absolutely, of that tunnel. Yeah, I agree. Because there are some, there's some crazy idiots out there. And I hate to say it, but maybe they cover it for all the pregame festivities. But it may just need to be permanently covered. Yeah, not mad about that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, there should have be been protected. ropes up or guys standing there. Like, yep. And if I was a Raiders fan, I would, I would, I, I would be, I would be, pull, be pulling a homer move and being like, man, he had his helmet on. He was pissed off after this game. He's so mad because Renfro freaking ran into him. He probably would have busted out open, maybe. I would have been pissed off too, you know. So I mean, I would defend him too if I was a Raider. If I was a Raiders fan, def- I would defend him yeah. big time. So. And I, you know, so well, uh, what was the next thing we were? It was the on? Broncos. I, I, yeah, I was talking about how bad I missed on the Broncos. I mean, I, they're, they're bad. And I mean, and I mean, like their defense is all world, but they can't score ten points, man. Is uh, that's bad? That's terrible. By the way, easiest money I made was hey. the under. Week on the two, under, the Sunday the night football against the Forty ers <laughs> I don't even remember what it was. I was like, uh, yes. It was like, 40, it was like no. 38 and a half. Wait, the under uh, for what? The for 49ers. Uh, it was like Broncos. 38 and a half. We also, hey, you sent me the teaser for Colts Broncos. Oh, yeah. And that was so he, we did so, it. He sends me this teaser and goes, dude, Colts, a six point teaser, Colts uh, plus nine and a half. Yeah. And then, and then uh, you got to go under. Whatever it was, it was like thirty something. But I'm like, under, dude, no, no. I think I think after <laughs> after our teaser, I think it, it may have been up into forty. It might have been in the. 40s, I was like, but dude, this has this is gonna hit all day. I'm like, Denver one one. Denver's not gonna win by ten because they can't score ten points. No, Denver yeah. can't score, and Indy can't, can't score. score. No, so I was like, oh, that's easy mm. money. Yeah. So betting tip I've seen, and I think, and it, it, it kind of plays we'll out. Kind of close on this. Do what? Oh. The uh, when you're betting like over unders or you're betting, say you're betting like an underdog, games that have super low totals, betting on it, like a plus three or higher underdog is really the way to go. Since points are really going to be at a premium, it's going to be a super close game. So like that teaser you sent me was like, I mean that was like that was an easy bet. Like as soon as you said that to me, I go, yeah, duh, yeah, yeah. Um, so we missed on Broncos. Uh, what else did we miss on? I don't know if I've missed on the Colts yet. I still feel like they could. I think, I think Jerry's around. still out. Two two. What are they? Two 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 and one. Two, second two, place. One. Titans are three and two. Uh, and I don't know. That's that my the, team. I don't know the Titans hold on. Did, did anybody? Did anybody think the Patriots were gonna be were gonna be good? No. I thought they might Jim, squeak in the playoffs. Oh, you might not be all. They're two and three. But Mac Jones has regressed. Yeah. Oh man, they're well, all the thing is, is bad too. The thing is, you know, a lot of these younger quarterbacks, the league has to try to figure them out, right? That last year's their first year. Right. They don't have any film on them. You can't use college film because that's ir- that's Different completely system. irrelevant. Those are kids versus professionals. You know now they all have film on them. Joe Burrow, for example, they have film on them. You keep going down the list. Lamar regress. Pat started to regress. Just to hear I regress. I don't. I don't think Lamar's <laughs> regressing personally. But right now, I, I think, think he's doing. Just I fine. think his second year. His was second like a year was a little rough. bit worse. Yeah. And well, then, no, no, he won MVP his second year. So it's his third it was year. His third year, and he then this rough. year he switched up his game where he's he's throwing the ball. He's throwing the ball pretty nice. Still can't throw the ball outside the numbers though. <laughs> I think the MVP race right now is probably between <laughs> Mahomes, Lamar, Josh. Actually, let me let me just throw this out there. Unfortunately, if I he ain't a bad dude, so I don't want to pay. Unfortunately, as if dude, I mean, I think it's funny. Dak had not hurt, got hurt. And they were are, the Cowboys are still on this win streak. They're four and one. Is Dak in the MVP conversation? I mean, it depends on how you're winning. It depends on his numbers. If if he's doing what Cooper Rush is doing, because right now I mean, no, because like, Rush is throwing like two touchdowns a game. Yeah, but look, I mean, you can just look at the Giants. Daniel Jones ain't in the yeah, MVP but, conversation. And and Saquon's and taking that team over. And Daniel Jones, <laughs> yeah, Daniel Jones might have. But if it's because, if it's because of Dak's play. Absolutely. If yeah. it's 5,000 yard, 35 touchdown Dak, 100%. I think, getting, I think he's in an MVP race. We're getting Mahomes. Mahomes is putting together an MVP. Yeah. Style and have Mahomes will be this fine. Year. Goodness gracious. Yeah. And, and the offense isn't, I'm like, we were talking about it 
it's different, right? It's different. They haven't clicked. It's still good. They haven't clicked. Pat's still throwing the ball behind guys. The guys are still dropping passes that shouldn't be dropped. I mean, it's just... When we get to games eight and nine is when we'll start seeing, okay, this is what we got. Yeah. So hopefully it will not be another five weeks before we record. Hopefully we'll be no, able to get yeah, back. hopefully not. Next week, uh, I know my life's about to slow down big time here in about three or four weeks. So we'll get it figured out. Yeah, we'll get it figured out. But uh, anyway. Wednesdays work nice. Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, make sure to share this on all social media. Uh, we're under Midwest Mics on everything, TikTok, everywhere. Um, check us out. Uh, I'm Gary. This is Austin. And Gritty. And we'll see you guys hopefully next week.